Hi, my name is Tony Phillips and I'm the Director of Social Services for the Town of Bridgefield. I have worked for the town for the last seven years, starting back in 2013, and it is currently uh, September of 2020. Um, so we've been uh, very busy over the, the last handful of months. Uh, we're always busy, and uh, a part of what we do is um, allocating resources. Um, so we take in lots and lots of donations from the town. The town is a very generous community. Um, with both food and, and money and gift cards and, and um, volunteer activities and all sorts of things. Um, and so in, in regular times, um, we're just, you know, taking in some of those resources, finding people uh, who live here in town that need it and making sure that uh, nobody gets sort of left behind or falls through the cracks, uh, whether it be for rent or heat or food, um, food being one of our primary um, uh, resources. And um, so in normal times, we're busy. Uh, we have, you know, picked up speed since uh, going back to March when um, COVID-19 pandemic um, made its way to America. Um, so if we go back to uh, early March, it's probably around March 10th or so, um, we were forced to close Town Hall. And with that, we closed the doors to our food pantry. And in, in normal times, uh, we probably can feed anywhere from 100 to 150 people, um, you know, in a short period of time, whether it be a week or two weeks. Um, we don't see 150 people coming in our doors, but, um, you know, we have moms and dads that come in and they'll need to feed their two or three or, or four kids. Um, so in normal times, it's anywhere from 100 to 150. Um, and we were forced to shut our doors. And... Um, what we immediately did as a response to that, because we were concerned about people coming into town hall, um, you know, people just sort of traveling about, because at that time there were no testing, there's no, uh, we really didn't know what we were up against. Uh, so we closed everything and uh, my assistant and I, Karen Gaudian, who's a, a miracle worker, um, not on this video, but she's a miracle worker, everybody should know her name, um, uh, started giving out gift cards. and. Um, uh, to this day, so go back to March through um, maybe last week or so, uh, the town food pantry has distributed over $60,000 in, uh, in gift cards. Um, and maybe I should go back uh, maybe six days before the uh, uh, sort of pandemic news really hit and, and town hall needed to close. Um, we got a huge donation from one of the, um, the big philanthropy uh, groups here in town, Ridgefield Thrift Shop. And they donated a fifty thousand dollar check uh, to me right on the town hall steps. So if you're uh, a researcher and you're you're looking through old photos, you may find uh, a picture of me accepting a, a large fake check. Um, and that was a really huge boost. Um, you know, right? Who would have known um, that we would have needed all that um, as we headed into uh, into the, the next handful of months? But so going back to uh, food gift cards, uh, we thought that was a, a wise decision, uh, not something that we typically do. We usually uh, work in non-perishable uh, foods. We have a couple cabinets in town hall um, that we, we you know, fill up and empty out and fill up and empty out on a continuous basis. Um, but we, uh, we switched over to doing gift cards and we found that it was really uh, easy for our staff because uh, I've been generally working from home. Um, for you know the last handful of months um, and so we were kind of down to one person one staff person in town hall and so it made it uh, a lot easier for for us to manage but also to keep everybody safe um, but we did find out sort of the true value uh, or true cost per month of um, you know what it uh, what it costs to, to help feed a town um, to help feed you know people who are experiencing food insecurity and, uh, and that was something that was a little bit harder to capture in prior months because uh, people would drop off bags of food and there's no real value on that. I can't you know, tell you whether it's worth $10 or $20, but, uh, but now you know, we, we see the, uh, the, the true value. Uh, so we shut down the food pantry, um, but we, we never really closed our doors. We've, we've been open um, all the way through answering the phone, emails, uh, you know, working on programs, making sure that we're, you know, talking with the stakeholders and making sure everybody's needs are met. And I'll, I'm going to uh, tell you about a couple of programs that we created in response to this, to make sure that everybody had food, because food is one of, uh, one of our primary uh, uh, resources that humans need. And um, as we look across the, the board, the different things that some of the, some people in town, um, you know, reach out to us for, uh, including rent or uh, utility help, 
um, clothing, you know, some of the basic needs, um, you know, food is, is primary. And, uh, and some of the other uh, things like rent and, and um, utility uh, service received some moratoriums for, you know, shut off um, moratoriums and, and eviction moratoriums. So we primarily focused on food. So one of the really cool programs that uh, I was really proud of um, is called Feed Our Tigers. And we worked with Tiger Hollow Inc., which is the not-for-profit group that um, manages the, uh, uh, the football field uh, over at the high school and the athletic fields over there. And so they contacted me and said, you know, Tony, we'd like to do a food drive. You know, maybe we can use our space and have people drive up and drop off at uh, Tiger Hollow. But if you go back a few minutes ago, remember I said that we closed our doors and we weren't um, working on perishables. So I talked with uh, Jill Bornstein, who's the, uh, uh, the president of Tiger Hollow Inc. And uh, we came up with a, a plan to help feed or continue to feed uh, families that uh, received free and reduced lunch help through the schools. And so in normal times, uh, families can access or kids can access free and reduced lunch at the, at the schools. Um, and typically, the, the, those programs end in the summer and they'll pick back up um, in the fall uh, because these are different times um, between uh, Jill and I and, and our staff. Uh, we talked about um, making sure that people had uh, continued access to help for school lunches. So we created a program where um, uh, Tiger Hollow went out and recruited volunteers. Um, I went out and recruited uh, people who uh, thought that they would need the help. And we ended up with 32 families accounting for 68 children. And um, Tiger Hollow Inc. had their volunteers actually take shopping lists that were provided by our, um, our recipients. And they actually went shopping for, for them and uh, dropped off food every Monday, uh, whether it be one bag or two bags or six bags, it was really up to the donor, and uh, dropped off bags uh, every week at uh, Lounsbury. And if you look behind me, you'll see uh, some of the fruits of that labor. Um, this might've been the first or second week or third week um, where uh, you, can, you can really see the generosity um, piled up behind me. Um, so that was a really uh, neat program. We just finished it, they, they did 10 weeks, and my estimate is that that probably accounted for somewhere close to $15,000 in, in assistance um, through the, uh, the Tiger Hollow Inc. donors. So uh, we're really thankful for their participation. Um, as well, we work very closely, we, we always work very closely with the Salvation Army and um, they contacted us early on, maybe back in the first week of April or end of March and let us know that they were gonna be packing boxes of staple uh, items and now they have a, a long history of doing this. If uh, they shared with me, they go back to like Hurricane Maria, where they had packed some of these boxes and were delivering them literally door to door uh, down in uh, Puerto Rico a couple of years back, and uh, it was you know a real lifesaver for some. And so uh, they replicated that model up here in Connecticut. And so uh, on a week to week basis, uh, we would uh, take delivery of anywhere from 40 to 80 uh, boxes. And um, it was my job to allocate those resources. So, um, you know, working with different stakeholders to figure out who is it that needs the food. Um, we moved those food boxes um, on a week to week basis to be delivered at Ballard Green, which is uh, some of our senior housing here, um, over to Congregate, which is also senior housing, uh, the Meadows, which is uh, uh, affordable housing, across the street at Halpin Court, which is also affordable housing. And then um, in our, I think it was our fourth or fifth cycle, we would uh, do sort of an open one for uh, anybody in the community that uh, that needed, and we did one of the drive. We did a drive through at uh, Boys and Girls Club with their partnership. They were a great partner, um, and we also worked with uh, St. Andrew's Lutheran Church um, to use their parking lot to do a distribution. And now, keeping in mind, um, we've never done any of these distributions, uh, you know, in, in times of pandemic. So you know, there's lots of logistics to try to you know work out who's got masks, who needs gloves, um, you know, how much how much or how little contact can we make so uh, um, you know we did everything contactless um, we had uh, a couple of our volunteers with a wagon that would you know ride uh, or drive the uh, the boxes door to door and, and deliver them so um, I want to say that we um, we did I think 12 11 or 12 of those distributions uh, times 40 um, so we, uh, we we served a lot of meals that way uh, and we're really proud to be working with Salvation Army and, and really thankful for them. Um, as well, working with Salvation Army, we've done this before uh, last summer, but we, uh, we picked it up a, a, a notch 
uh, this year. We partnered with Salvation Army and Veronica's Garden and did a, uh, a fresh uh, fruit and vegetable program for seniors and uh, provided 30 seniors with $30 vouchers to be used at Veronica's Garden, which is a small, um, it's a local gardener. They, they grow uh, vegetables on their property and then they have a little uh, for sale, um, a little outdoor market uh, down by uh, Prime Taco, which closed this week, um, last week. But um, they, uh, you know, our seniors could go down there and go shopping and get some fresh vegetables. Um, and so, you know, that's just that's one of our our issues with the food pantry is trying to keep um, fresh foods uh, going, getting out there to our, our residents. Um, so we decided to uh, to spend a little bit more money, uh, you know, and, and created that program again. Um, we created a new program, a uh, small program, but a new program using um, other local gardens and including Veronica's garden. We called it Dirty Hands uh, Full Plates with the idea that um, we had local gardeners or local farms that um, might be interested in supporting some of our residents and we were right. So I worked with a couple of uh, great volunteers, uh, actually there's a handful, but uh, primarily working with a gentleman by the name of Jeff Ash, uh, Pamela Dunaway, uh, Anita McKeon, working with St. Andrew's Church, uh, Pastor Beth uh, Anderson, and um, and we pulled together a program that uh, provides fresh produce every other week to uh, 10 different families. And it's sort of like a CSA, which is a, a crop share uh, arrangement um, where uh, local farms can fill a box or fill a bag and people you know normally pay for that, but we ended up uh, giving this out for free. And so what we did was uh, Cornerstone Garden, uh, led by C.C. Berger, um, pulled together some volunteers uh, with Anita McKeon and, and her family, her kids, uh, Ethan and Isabel, and uh, they would actually go uh, pick vegetables um, the morning of our distribution. And uh, we partnered with Veronica's Garden, who would also uh, provide for us some excess uh, vegetables that they had. And um, we worked with Nature's Temptation, which is a local grocery store, a little uh, organic grocery store here in town. Um, and so they would provide us with a base. Uh, I would pay, I'd pay for that, uh, put that in a bag, and then we would get a uh, donated product from Cornerstone and from um, Brian's Garden. And I think uh, we just did a distribution yesterday. It was our last, uh, scheduled to be our last one. We might actually do a couple more depending on um, how the season goes. But uh, each of those families got uh, upwards of 25 pounds of um, fresh vegetables, fresh produce. Um, give or take each week. And uh, yesterday we had some cantaloupes and kale and uh, I heard strawberries and some other things. So um, it's been uh, really neat and um, our residents have been really thankful for that. Um, and you know, what I didn't mention is that it's also been a little bit difficult to uh, access some foods um, because of the supply chain issues. And so, um, you know, with us being able to, to get food to people's doors or, or get it to a distribution point, um, you know, we're really proud of that effort because uh, there's, there's sometimes, even when I do my own shopping uh, curbside or, or uh, through a delivery service, um, you don't always get what you think you're going to get. And so, uh, you know, to know that we had uh, something in the pipeline for these 10 families, plus those 40 families with Salvation Army, plus, uh, you know, the, the, um, the 32 families for Tiger Hollow, I'm sorry, for um, uh, Feed Our Tigers, really proud of um, the ability to, to kind of move the food around and doing it all uh, really on a volunteer basis. Um, you know, we're really re relying on volunteers to, to do a lot of this with uh, myself working from home and um, Karen Gaudian working from town hall and trying to keep her sort of local and uh, able to answer the phone and, and emails rather than uh, bouncing around from property to property. Another uh, option we worked with the United Way um, and uh, Kim Morgan and, and um, Kara Mitchell and uh, they pulled together a healthy savings uh, card for us where we have, I think, 40 something cards out um, where people can just go to their local grocery store and access 50% um, savings on uh, produce up to 20 bucks. So um, that's been a real help. We've been doing that for uh, maybe you know, close to a year now. Um, but during the pandemic, uh, instead of 50% off, they were given 100% off. And so everybody who had one of those cards was able to go to Stop and Shop and access $20 worth of free produce every week. And, um, and then lastly, I'll, I'll end with um, the our sort of big uh, program that was uh, run through a separate not-for-profit, but um, entailed help from uh, both me and mostly from my, uh, my, my colleague, Karen, 
Um, it's called Ridgeville Responds. And um, back in probably early April, uh, Rudy Marconi, our first selectman, came up with, uh, with an idea, or he knew that there was gonna be a need. We all knew that there was gonna be a need to help people with rent because so many people were um, expected to be out of work. Um, in fact, I just looked at the, the data today. Um, Ridgefield is at about 7% um, unemployment rate. And uh, this time last year, there was about 3%. Um, so we're talking about hundreds and hundreds of people that, that are uh, out of work um, in town and twice as many as, uh, as we normally experience. Um, but so uh, he worked with uh, a group of great volunteers to pull together a program to help um, some of our Ridgefield residents with uh, rent help. And um, they helped up to $1,500 per month. Uh, the program ran from April to July. So anybody who applied was eligible, potentially eligible for up to $6,000 in aid. Um, and that $1,500 just uh, goes toward helping for some of the rent. Um, rent here in Richfield in 2020 can be very expensive. It's just uh, on an email chain with a resident who is spending over $3,000 a month on rent. Um, you know, some people can rent for $1,500, but, uh, but generally speaking, um, you're not going to find anything here in town, um, especially if you have a family for under $2,000. Um, it can creep up to $3,000 and even more. So there were lots of people who, who needed help. There were, I believe, over 130 unique um, uh, Richfield households that applied. And um, I don't have the final tally, but uh, they took in donations and uh, distributed close to $500,000 in assistance uh, for rent. So, uh, so that was a, a huge help for many, many, many of our Ridgefield residents uh, to keep them you know, up to date uh, with their rent as best, um, as best the town could. And the, the state has also picked up and, and is offering, um, they have a program that was slated to distribute about $10 million and they just increased up to $20 million. Although I'm not really expecting a lot of our Ridgefield residents to uh, qualify for that, but, um, but we, we continue to, to direct people towards some of these programs because um, you know, there, there's lots of people hurting due to the economy. Um, and there's a lot of, in, in our world, a lot of service workers, a lot of um, you know, people who need to be in, whether they work at um, a restaurant or they work at you know, a uh, cash register, um, uh, you know, a lot of those folks are, are struggling um, you know, to, to make ends meet whether their offices are open or, or closed or have uh, cut hours or you know, working more remotely. So, um, so we continue to, uh, to try and find new ways to help them. Uh, ritual response closed, but um, you know, we're, we're continuing to uh, work with folks, uh, make sure that they have all the information about the state programs and uh, any local programs um, you know, that we might be running. So, uh, so that's a little uh, taste of some of the different programs that um, we created here in Ridgefield to help meet the needs of our residents. Um, you know, we're, uh, we generally are helping anywhere from 100 to 150 residents. Um, I can tell you that the 130 or so who applied for Ridgefield Responds were not uh, uh, names that we typically see. So, um, and we have not yet seen all of those people come back to us for more help. So my, I'm crossing my fingers and hoping a little bit that um, the, the job market is picking back up a little bit. Maybe people uh, can get back in and get some hours, um, you know, make some money. But, uh, but we're still kind of waiting to see whether or not, um, you know, when, once people sort of expend down on their, uh, uh, either they're using credit or using their savings, you know, what that will look like uh, a month from now or two months from now or six months from now. Um, and as you may or may not have heard in any of these other videos, uh, during this time of pandemic, uh, things seem to change every day, um, sometimes even every hour. And so it's really hard to, to plan ahead um, because you never know what's, you know, what's going to be at your doorstep um, in the morning when you get into work. So uh, with that, we try to be uh, up to date, making sure that uh, all of our folks have as much information as they can. We're using uh, social media a lot for that, the emails, um, even done a couple of videos of myself. If you look real hard, you might even see some of those. Um, you know, just letting people know what's going on um, and trying to connect with them. So with that, I'm Tony Phillips, uh, Social Services Director for the Town of Ridgefield, and um, I'm going to get back to work and continue uh, helping feed people and, and, you know, find ways to make life a little bit more comfortable and connect with